Okay, uh, here we are again. We are at a very exciting moment. We are so close, so close to finishing with this introductory section where I have no idea. I feel like I'm not really in control and maybe I'm screwing this all up. But uh, soon we're going to be getting to vectors. And vectors is a place where I think we'll feel comfortable and we'll sort of be on a directed path, knowing where we're going to create these um, rich motion simulations in processing. But before we do that, uh, there's an important topic that I think is actually probably the most important of all of these kind of beginning introductory topics about random numbers, and that is Perlin noise. Uh, Perlin noise is going to allow us to create a randomness in our code that is smooth, that has a more organic feel to it, that's going to allow us to do a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, uh, create a lot of things in processing that, that feel a bit more natural or, um, that's really just what I wanted to say. <laughs> Trying to come up with the right words. I should stop and restart, but I'm going to keep going. OK. So Perlin noise. What is Perlin noise? First of all, Perlin noise is named for Ken Perlin, who if we just broke through this wall and kept going and broke through another wall and went into the next building, we would find. Uh, Ken Perlin is a professor here at NYU in the computer science department. Um, and he developed um, Perlin noise, I believe, while working on the film Tron, somebody correct me and write nasty letters that I'm getting this all wrong, um, in, in the 80s. In fact, he won a, an Academy Award for his, his work in computer graphics and with Perlin noise. So Perlin noise was originally developed to create procedural textures for 3D models in computer graphics, meaning, okay, if we want to have a vase that has a, a, you know, a sort of marble-like texture to it, would you have a vase with a marble-like texture? I'm not sure. Um, do we need to hand create that with with um, through handmade techniques, or can we create an algorithm that will make that texture procedural? Now, how does it do this, and what is what? What are we really talking about here? Well, first, let's think about this moment of time for a second. This moment, this idea of time. Let's think about time and random numbers. Let's say this line represents time, and time is moving along. This is the beginning of time. This is the end of time. We're somewhere in the middle there, I suppose. Time is moving along, and let's say we pick a random number at any moment in time. OK, I, I'm not going to be able to do this because I'm a human being, and I am just destined for pattern. But you could imagine it's going to have, it's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to look something like this. It's going to be this graph that makes no sense at all, that just looks like a lot of squiggly randomness all over the place. Any random number that we pick at any moment in time has no relationship to the previous random number that we picked or the next random number that we pick. There's no smoothness here. So what does Perlin noise look like? Well, if you think of Perlin noise over time, it might look something more like this. Isn't that soothing and relaxing and lulling? A nice little graph there. It, 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 I, know, I, I don't know if I, how well I drew this, but this is randomness in that it's random. You can't predict, is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Is it going to go up a lot, down a little bit? But yet there's a smoothness to it. There is this idea that the, a, cur a, a random number over here is related to the previous and related to the next ones. Random numbers change slightly over time. This is a very powerful concept. If we can pick random numbers in this fashion, then we could have something organically grow and shrink randomly, but in a nice kind of almost breathing or organic-like way. I'm using the word organic way too much. But you can see what I'm really trying to driving at. This has a more natural quality to it than this. And Perlin noise is something that, you know, in a way, I was saying earlier that randomness is this crutch. Oh, I don't know what to, how to make all my variables. Let's just make them all randomness. My crutch, my personal crutch in life, is I just make everything with Perlin noise. Eh, it's random, but it'll be smooth, and so people will like it. So we need to be careful here. We want to use these different algorithms in the appropriate time for whatever it is, what behavior or what sort of e expressive quality we're trying to achieve in our animations and our program. But this is another tool in our bag of tricks that we can use. So the question is, how do we use Perlin noise? And what, is, what do the results look like? Well, again, let's take, let's take a scenario. Uh, this pen, by the way, I'm going to need a new one in a moment. Let's take a scenario where what we want, here is our processing window. And what we want is to be able to, um, notice there too much. I need to be looking this way more. I should also be talking about this in the middle of the video. OK, what we want is um, to put a circle on the screen. And every frame, we're going to give it a random location. So we're going to say, hey, float x equals random between 0 and width. And we are going to draw a circle at that, at that location. And we're going to see what that looks like. Let's do that together, actually. Um, let's press this button and come over here. So 
I should have pre-populated this with setup and draw, but that's okay. I can type fast. So uh, uh, background zero, fill 255. I'm going to draw a circle, and it's going to be at an X location in the middle of the screen. And it's going to be a, a nice size circle. And uh, X is going to be a random value between zero and width and random noise thingy. OK, so let's run this and see what we get. Um, you can see here, um, if I just slide all this over, uh, I'm going to get used to doing this eventually. You can see here, this is randomness. Every frame, it's at a new random location. And in fact, uh, we could maybe see this a bit more easily if I just slow the frame rate down to something like 10 frames per second and run it again, you can see there's no relationship. We just have this dot moving anywhere because it's random in every frame. So what do we want to do is we want to start looking at code for doing this with Perl and noise. We want to say float x equals noise something. So this is an interesting question now. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> I'm really botching this. OK, this is an interesting question now because with random, it was very clear what the arguments to the random function are. Minimum and maximum range of randomness. <laughs> what are the arguments to the noise function? It would be nice if I could just say 0, comma width. And if you type that in there, it actually would accept that and run, but it wouldn't work the way that you want it to. The thing about noise is no matter what, this noise function is going to give us a value between 0 and 1. Perl and noise, the noise, Perl and noise function in processing will always, no matter what you do, give you a value between 0 and 1. You cannot affect the range of what comes out of that function. We're going to be able to affect it quite easily in a moment using the map function in processing to map it to a different range. But right now, we're only ever going to get a 0 between a 0 and a 1 out of that function. So what goes in there? Well, remember how we had this idea of time? Well, with randomness, you know, there is sort of this idea of time. Maybe there's a pseudo random number generator that's giving us a random num set of random numbers in sequence. But time didn't really play a part in our thinking about it. With Perl and noise, we've actually created a deterministic sort of time space continuum. I don't know, we're in Star Trek land. That makes no sense. We need to give time as this argument. Now, time, what is it? For I like to sort of think of it as in time in the terms of this graph. Like, do we want this random number at this moment in time? Or do we want this random number at this moment in time? What does that, what does that mean? Well, um, what are we doing here? Well, in fact, we just need to create a variable. And so let's kind of get rid of this stuff over here. Let's call it t. And we could say, hey, let's ask for Perl and noise at time equals 0. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we add this now to our code. We know that we want, if this is the beginning of time, we want Perl and noise value at time equals 0. And let's see what that gives us. I'm here. I'm back. OK. So uh, we are now going to switch this to say x equals noise. And we said at some moment in time, and I'm going to create a global variable called t. And we're going to run this. And where's our circle? Well, first of all, our circle. <laughs> <laughs> is at 0, right? Because Perl and noise only ever gives us a value between 0 and 1. We can't get any other value but a value between 0 and 1. So we want to use this function in processing called the map function. Boy, I would love to just do a whole video just about the map function. And you know what? I'm definitely going to do that. But right now, I'm going to kind of assume that that exists and you've watched it and kind of just add the map function kind of quickly. So what I want to do is remap the value of x. And to map the value of x, which we know goes between 0 and 1, um, and actually, uh, yeah, that's fine, uh, between 0 and 1. And I want to map that between 0 and width. And I'm going to run this now. Uh, I lost my pen. OK, so ah, so look, the circle's still over there. But we got, let's run it again. Eh, it's over there now. You can see we're going to get a random value. Ah, there it is, right? Per the Perl and noise space is seeded at the beginning of the processing sketch, and we're getting the noise value at, the, at time equals 0. But it's not moving. It's never changing. Because the noise value at time equals 0 never changes. It's the same always and forever more for, that, for this instance of the sketch running. So what does that mean we need to do? What we need to do is move through time. We want in our sketch to say, give me the Perl and noise value here. 
then here, then here, then here, then here, then here. We want all those values in sequence so we get a sequence of these smooth values. And how far along we move through time? Do we move to here, to here, to here? That's going to really be awful. So I'm going to be just regular randomness. Or do we move very, very teeny tiny slowly like a little tiny crawling thing? OK, very slowly. We need to say t equals t plus something. Some value to increment. Should we go 0.00001 or should we do 0.5? Whatever. We could just try that and see what happens. So let's take a look over here and see if we add that. Okay, so we want to say let's move through time. Let's try t equals t plus 1. That makes sense, right? Well, uh, that's sort of more just like randomness. And I had that frame rate. Let's take that. Uh, let's, let's let it run fast, 60 frames per second. You can see that's pretty much just like randomness. That t equals t plus 1 is moving really big steps through time. And in really big steps through time, we lose the fact that this, there's this nice kind of curve going on there. And so if I come back over here, let's do something much more reasonable and say t equals t plus 0 0.05. And look at this. I want it to appear. I, I need to like redo my layout here. But we can see, look, it's actually kind of moving um, al almost um, more smoothly now. Maybe that's too big. So I, it's also running very quickly at 60 frames per second. Which, so you can see now we're getting this nice uh, sort of smooth motion because we're seeing this sequence of random numbers. It almost looks like it's moving with some type of rules, almost some type of physics to it. We've just sort of accidentally created this physics, this random walker, so to speak, with Perlin noise. And so this would be kind of my exercise to you um, if you want to try to um, try to take this uh, and kind of like link it to everything we've been doing so far. There's so many places in all the examples where you'll be able to add Perlin noise in. But right now, I'd say to you, go to that random walker and try to make a Perlin noise random walker. And I'll include, <laughs> at some point, I'll watch these videos and see all the things I say. And then I'll put these links on the Vimeo page or wherever it is to, to examples. But um, you should be able, you actually, you can definitely find, if you go to the Nature of Code book GitHub repo, you can find uh, uh, several examples of the random walker with uh, Perlin noise. Um, so there's more to Perlin noise. One thing I just want to allude to very quickly that you could also do as an exercise is that right, we have time here in one dimension. And really, this idea of time I just used as a, a sort of way of us describing how Perlin noise works. But this is really just one dimensional space. right? There's a value, there's a sort of a string. And on the string are written lots of numbers in one dimension. But what if we took that string and made it into a piece of paper? And the number here is related to all these other numbers that are near it. So in, instead of a number here just having some neighbor to the left and right, it has neighbors all around it in two-dimensional space. So what if you could map noise values in two-dimensional space to height values in, a, in some sort of top, 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 topology or, if, or pixel values in some type of texture for an image, right? You'll get, this is where you can start to get procedural textures for, um, for three-dimensional objects. So that's looking at two-dimensional noise and how that can work is kind of an exciting uh, possibility as well. Um, and we'll see later on in the video series when we look at a flow field for objects sort of dropped into a space and moving almost as if there's these currents and rivers pushing them alongward and create that flow field with two-dimensional Perlin noise. Um, so um, um, yeah, I, I, I have a list here. And I, I would like to make a 2D Perlin noise video, which maybe we'll do at some point as well. OK, so this video is done. Uh, you're going to have lots of questions and confusing things and whatever. We'll remake this video or add some links and all this. Everything will be OK. Everything's going to be OK, right? Somebody tell me. OK. Uh, goodbye.